All right, guys, today we are going to be breaking down my EDC update. Now, I'm hoping to do these videos like once a month and, uh, you know, incorporate some more monthly kind of featured content. But this is one of them. And today we're going to be looking at my EDC. It has changed quite a bit since the last uh, time that you guys saw it. So now let's jump right into it. Okay, guys, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all that fun stuff if you want to see more behind the scenes content and just more fun content in general. I do a lot, especially on Instagram. So now let's jump into it. Okay, so first off, we'll go over kind of the tech part of this because it really, I feel like it doesn't change that much because I kind of get set in my ways and I just don't really like to change it. So first off is going to be so first off is going to be the iPhone. This is just an iPhone 11 Pro Max. I've had it for a long time. It's very venerable, very nice, and it works for me well. Of course, I am kind of integrated into the Apple ecosystem, right, wrong, or indifferent. So I do usually run AirPods. These are AirPod Pros. And then of course, I'm running a Series 5 Apple Watch. Though I'm not gonna lie, I have seen I'm not gonna lie, I have seen the new Apple Watch um, and it is pretty amazing as well. The large version uh, or the larger version is a serious contender for actually making it into my rotation. It is a little bit expensive right now, at least for me. Um, but once the price goes down or once they drop the newer edition, that one becomes outdated. I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up picking that one up. I forget, I'm blanking on the name of it at the moment, but uh, the newest Apple Watch, I think would actually be pretty venerable for life in Alaska, especially because of its extended battery life. But that's enough tech talk for now. Uh, let's jump into the multi-tool. So this here is a Charge Plus. Now this is my original Charge Plus. As you guys can probably see, it's a little bit battered. This side is actually pretty good, I will say. But uh, this side is a little bit not so fortunate. So it's a little bit battered and beaten. But uh, this is my original Charge Plus that uh, I usually carry my G10 version, but I have this feeling in the mood to carry my original charge plus because i have it and i feel like i never carry it and it is a totally solid multi-tool it does have the 154 cm primary blade on it as opposed to the s30v but that's kind of inconsequential for me because i'm really primarily using a dedicated edc knife but as i've done many videos in the past talking about my edc multi-tools i really do like having that solid set of pliers that you can really pry on you can really use the heck out of and i think you guys can see here these ones have somehow taken some damage i think right there i don't really know how that happened but anyways these are used and abused but it is my favorite multi-tool the charge plus as a whole is just generally my favorite multi-tool so that is my tech and the multi-tool out of the way quickly i will say i am also rocking edc uh car keys this is my auto start this is my just normal truck key as you guys can probably tell i have swapped up the truck i was previously driving a 2017 tacoma and uh, now i'm driving a 2014 tundra and uh, i'll probably do a more comprehensive video of this truck as it goes on but uh, yeah i'm definitely glad to be back to the tundra as i've done a few videos um, talking about why I dislike the Tacoma quite a bit and so that smaller vehicle overall just wasn't really uh, a good fit for me I like the bigger truck uh, the Tundra so that is this guy but like I said I'll save that for another video to go into it more in detail but yeah so that's what's on my keys or on my lanyard for my keys so anyways moving on for a wallet we have um so for the wallet, we have an OpenSea Topsider. So this is one of their wallets. I have quite a few OpenSea leather wallets. I just really love their leather. It's really hard to kind of explain, but it's so soft and supple that it's really nice to carry. I actually really just like these wallets quite a bit. So you notice them, especially if you follow me on Instagram, I do a lot of pocket dumps because I think they're a lot of fun uh, to make for pictures and stuff. I really like uh, making them. So these are regular, the OpenSea leather uh, wallets are regular in those uh, pocket dumps. Next to that, of course, I do rock a Zippo. I do have my blacked out Zippo, but I usually just end up carrying my satin Zippo because it usually just sits in a pocket, usually just with my wallet so they don't really scratch each other. But sometimes it, some piece of metal gets in there. And so that's why I don't usually carry the blacked out one because I feel like it gets scratched up and kind of damaged. But uh, yeah, that's just my really scratched up, heavily used and abused Zippo, but I love it. I've had it for 
many years i think actually close to 10 years now because it was made in 2012 so yeah it's an old old lighter but it still works great okay so now now to move to some new stuff and not necessarily the most exciting stuff maybe for some but as far as the pen goes i'm running a generation two so this is an older generation um usg or ultimate survival gear tie bolt so this one you'll probably notice if you're familiar with tie bolts does not have like the clicky function on the top it just has the bolt action which isn't too bad this one is also of course made of brass as you guys can see i do like my brass pens i guess <laughs> but uh yeah this one's not too bad i really do like like the thickness on this one quite a bit and I think that that is what has drawn me to it over my other pens as well I just wanted some more variety as far as EDC pens so that is why I picked up this guy and uh, yeah it's just a really cool brass pen the locking mechanism is very fidgety but also very effective and yeah so that is the ultimate survival gear gen 2 tie bolt next to that I'm also running a pry bar or a widgie I think is what they are calling these this is maritime own design and this one is their steel version this one's made in d9 tool steel and what i did to it to kind of customize it myself or give it my own personal touch is i took some gun blue to it and uh, i kind of roughly gun blued it so basically what i did was out of box i took uh, sandpaper like coarse grit roughed it up pretty good and then um just put that gun blue on it so you can kind of see that you know it is blued to the core but there's still some like kind of surface rust on it nothing like pitting or nothing that will like really damage the functionality of the tool but i wanted it to kind of get like a distressed weathered look and i wanted to do that before wrapping it in paracord so i also of course wrapped this guy in paracord um so I, I did that too because I wanted a little bit of extra grip. These uh, actual pry bars uh, are a pretty good size, I think, in width. But as far as like holding on to it, I really like that little bit of extra room that the paracord gives. And of course, that paracord has lots of traction as opposed to just like the steel. That's pretty slick itself. So I did those few customizations to it to kind of make it my own. I have a few different flavors and sizes of this. But by and large, if you see one in my EDC rotation, it's usually good going to be um, like blued kind of distressed and with paracord wrap because that's kind of the way I wanted them to look and so yeah these things are pretty cool they do make a version of this in titanium the primary reason I went with the steel version is because Meritac like the company or county com online they were doing like this um like kind of bundle I guess you can say where they were like sending five of these for a really good price I think it was like 20 bucks and so like five of these for 20 bucks I was like you know might as well just get five of them play around with them and use them a little bit I'm still kind of trialing um pry bars myself because there is a lot of functionality that i have with other tools like my multi-tool itself especially something like this leatherman that does have like flathead screwdrivers that are pretty thick in and of itself so i'm kind of like comparing you know using this to pry on things as opposed to using this i would definitely much rather if i was to break one of these i would definitely rather break a pry bar than a tool on my multi-tool so you know there is some validity to having the pry bar but yeah so i'm still kind of field trialing these and you know testing them out seeing how they work in my edc i've used it a few times and yeah so overall pretty cool that's a little meritech uh, widgie that one is in three inch i should say i do have like a four inch and i have a few uh, two inch versions as well so next new addition is going to be my flashlight. Now, like I've said in the past, every couple of years, maybe every year or so, I try to update my flashlight because technology for flashlights seemingly is like always increasing and getting better and better. So this one, I'm not 100% sure will be the mainstay for my EDC, but this one here is the E35. And this one is a little bit unique, or I should say this is the Phoenix L or e35 phoenix e35 and this one's pretty interesting because this one is a bit thicker than the ld30 that's what i was running previously um, as far as flashlights go but the cool thing about this one is it's about the same length as the ld30 so it's still very pocketable and very like you know you can hold this thing in your hand and it's basically the size of your hand it's just a bit thicker but the nice thing about this is the ld30 could flex up to 1600 lumens and this guy can flex up to 3000 lumens so it is quite a bit brighter than the ld30 and still reasonably pocket friendly now once again it's getting a little bit thick you know a little bit on the thick end for pocket friendly but it's not too shabby 
And the only thing that's kind of like an oddity to the E35 is that it doesn't use a traditional clicky switch on the back. You guys can see, you know, there's just a uh, label on the back. There's no clicky there. So uh, how you activate this one is through this light here. You kind of have to hold it. And so that's what turns it on and off. And so it's definitely an interesting user interface. Uh, the other thing I'm not like the largest fan of is when you start it up, it doesn't have like a memory. So if you want to get to the brightest setting, you have to, uh, you know, like start at the bottom, you know, like turn it on, goes to the lowest, and then you can kick it up to the brightest. But anyways, so it's a little bit interesting in that regard, but it is still pretty pocket friendly, pretty powerful flashlight. So I'll be running this one over the winter to see, you know, how it performs in contrast to my LD30. And yeah, so that is the E35 by Phoenix. I've been looking at getting it for a little while and decided might as well pull the trigger, especially now that winter is here and, you know, it gets dark pretty early in the day. So yeah, that is the flashlight. Okay, next one up and kind of bringing it to the end, we have just a few more things. The Hinder XM18, three and a half inch. I've had this guy in fairness for a little while. It's not necessarily a new knife to the channel, but it is a new knife to the rotation, I guess, in a way. I've been carrying it for a little while, to be honest, but um, this is definitely one of my mainstays, of course, with someone like me who has so many knives, I could honestly carry like a new knife every day for a couple weeks. Actually, I think about like three weeks and not use the same knife again. But uh, yeah, so I do, you know, kind of rotate through knives myself, but this is one of my favorite knives. I absolutely love the purple. I'll probably roll in some close in kind of, uh, or close up footage of this guy because I just absolutely love the way this thing looks and the way it performs. It is definitely like one of my go-to or favorite EDC knives in the collection. And I think that the size just really fits me quite well. I like how big it is. It's not too big, not too small. And uh, yeah, so I could talk honestly for hours about how cool this hinderer is, but uh, that is my go-to EDC knife. So I thought I would throw it in the EDC update. Okay, rounding it off with the last few things, we're gonna go over the firearm setup. So first off, we are running still the T-Rex Arms sidecar, and this is one of their earlier generations, so this isn't the one with like the modular kind of link system, but um, this one still works just fine for me. I really like it. Of course, it does have that spare mag, and with that spare mag, it is a 19 round Glock mag running, um, what are these guys? Underwood ammo, I believe it is. Extreme penetrators, 115 grains there. And then of course, for the actual firearm itself, we have a customed out Gucci Glock here. And uh, this one of course has a Trigicon RMR and uh, fax and barrel. And I'm trying to remember which manufacturer made the slide. It's, I'm blanking on it at the moment, but it is a custom slide as well. But uh, yeah, and then of course, for the ammunition, we're running Winchester, plus p nine mil in this guy so probably can't really see that all too well but they are hollow points and they are plus p 124 grainers so that is my setup for the firearm and uh yeah i've been edcing this setup for a little while now but uh it's just one of those things that i honestly really like carrying glocks so pushing more into the winter and probably more into the summer i'll probably go over to the fn 509c a little bit more to carry but honestly it's been kind of hard to not want to carry the glock because it just carries really well for me and I'm so familiar with the setup and system that uh, I just don't really want to go to anything else. So a little bit partial on that, but that is the setup for now. Uh, yeah, so that's my EDC update for December. Thank you guys for watching. As always, God bless, and I'm out.